Now, back to The Psychology of Spirit. During communication, some people ask about Ouija boards or witch boards. And they ask, Akira, should I use those? First, be known you don't need anything like that. You simply need yourself. And when you're wanting to talk to them, you have to remember to listen like it's a thought in your head. Also, when you're wanting to talk to someone you know, ask for them directly. Don't just throw it out there. Talk to the person that you want to talk to directly. Be in a comfortable place and just talk to them. And a lot of times you can do it while you're cooking in the kitchen or maybe working on your car. You can think about them and do two things at once. It doesn't have to be formal. If you're feeling an energy in your home that you want to talk to and you're not sure that it doesn't feel like someone who is a part of your family, simply address them. You don't have to find out who they are or where they come from. Simply address them and tell them that they need to leave now. Keep it very simple. Think of it as one of your kid's friends that you're telling to go home now or a friend that has overstayed their welcome and you're going to ask them to leave. Keep it very simple. Keep the drama out of it. Keep the fear low. When it comes to an Ouija board, you have to remember that you're calling in spirits into your home. And most of the time, these will be waywards. They will not be people who have crossed over. People who have crossed over have no need to come unless they're related to you. And very rarely is that what the Ouija board first picks up. I'm not telling you that you can't. I'm just telling you that it doesn't serve a purpose. And you're better off to talk to spirits that you love or ghosts of people you have lost or your guides than play around with strangers who no longer have their bodies. There's just no need. If you decide that you have to use the Ouija board, that you have to try this, that it's something you want to do, just clear your mind, bring in the purest, whitest light of what you believe in, and talk to someone by name that you have lost. That's the only way I would recommend it. Otherwise, you're going to get someone who comes in and waywards lie like people do. They don't have to be honest with you. They still have the same energy. They can tell you anything they want to tell you. They don't have to give you the true information of who they are. It's just like they're alive. Just because we die, we don't become all-seeing, all-knowing right away. It's a process back to becoming a part of the spiritual continuum. And once we reach there, most of us don't come back here anymore. We evolve on. So it's up to you what you choose to communicate and how you choose to do it. And remember, clearing your home is easy. It's very, very easy. Now, what's the difference between people who have died and our guides? Some people believe that guides have lived once on this life, in, in this life as a human. I do not believe that. What I've seen with guides is that they seem to be communicators for us. Until we're able to translate that energy of the language that we know of all the information, our guides seem to be our translators. I find that everybody has guides. I, the minimum number of guides I see on most people is three. But I've seen up to 11. And I find, though, that most people don't have more than two guides that talk. Now, how do we communicate with our guides? Who are our guides? I believe they're an extension of us. Now, some people will say, well, what about angels? I see sometimes that people name their guides angels. But I believe your guides are yours and yours alone. I believe that your guides may follow you through lifetimes. I believe that literally they are an extension of you that is closer to the universal source and the information. So therefore, when you're wanting to talk to your guides, sit in a state of prayer, a clear state of mind. And the quickest way to learn to communicate with your guides is to journal. The main guide that I believe talks I've named an overseer. Usually, not always, but usually they're male. And remember, they're spirits, so they don't have an actual sex. It's just the way they appear to us. Begin to write and ask questions. Start with yes-no questions, because we can easily feel yes or no. Because remember, they're not speaking in English, they're speaking in energy. So therefore, we have to learn how to hear our guides, and it does take practice. As you get better at journaling, 
you will start to hear your guides more clearly. A lot of people ask, but Akira, how am I going to tell the difference between the voice of my guides and the voice of my ego? Guides are always loving and supportive. Yes, sometimes they are direct, but they aren't confusing. I find that some people, when they first start communicating with their guides, they'll start to ask different questions of, should I get the red pair of shoes or the black pair of shoes? That's not really a question you want to be asking your guide. The guides and the gut instinct are really very much the same. And to remember that this is simplistic is another thing that you need to remember. It's not bigger than us, and all of us are able to do this. So when you start communicating, start with yes, no questions. Learn to feel the difference of yes or no. And notice I'm saying feeling, not hearing. As you get better at it, start journaling. It's best to journal three pages in a small notebook, not a large one. When you journal the first page, try and get rid of all the garbage that you have in your head. Make lists. Complain about whatever you need to complain about. As you write to the second page, start to write in a solution-oriented manner to find out if you can find resolutions, different problems, or gain insight on certain things in your life. Most of the time, by the time we reach, reach the third page, we're writing in a tone that we're not used to. A tone that sounds supportive, loving, often comes with information. Some people will say, well, my guides told me to do this and I didn't, and now... I'm in trouble. No, no, that's not the way it works. If they tell you to zig and you zag, it's not because you did something wrong. It's just showing you that you have the ability of foresight. But you were going to do what you needed to do anyway, and it's still not wrong. You have to remember, you're doing the best that you can in every moment. Guides are here to support us. They're here to be with us in our life, not change it. And another guide that I work with and that I see on a regular basis on people is the guide of emotion, the guide that helps us navigate our emotions, our feelings. And this is the guide that helps you channel energy. So the overseer is for information. The other guide I usually see is female and helps balance and work with emotions and energy. A lot of us don't like feeling. And therefore, the best way to bring this guide close is to work with yourself in thoughts and feelings of unconditional love and bathing yourself in universal energy. Another way to work with this is also be honest to your emotions. Know that you are always loved. And just work to feel this guide and bring it close to you, especially during times of pain. In this guide, I usually find female and usually quite beautiful. And make sure you're always working to say, it's okay. Even when you don't want to feel your emotions, tell yourself that's okay too. You are still being guided. You are still being loved. Another guide that I often see is one for laughter. It seems that humor is a big part of us as human beings. And I find that a lot of us lose it very quickly. This guide usually, no matter what, sits about two feet away from us in different areas. But is usually in front of us reminding us that life is meant to be savored and laughed at. It's not meant to be hidden from or feared. It is worth working with your guides. It is worth taking the time to see, feel, and hear them. Now, remember, the sight's not like the sight we see with our eyes. The sight is an internal type of imagination. When we're working with our guides, they will not blame, whine, ask you to take revenge, ever. The ego is one that does these things. So if you're ever working with a ghost, you're going to see that they still have an ego. If you're ever working with your own ego, you will hear that it sounds like a two-year-old or a six-year-old. And these are the things we must remember, too, when looking into these things. The voice of ego, it blames, whines, does not feel responsible for anything. Feels revenge is fine and usually works on a tit-for-tat basis. You have to remember 
that is not something that's going to guide you to where you need to be. Even those who have passed on who we love very much, they usually won't talk so much with ego, but remember they also don't have your answers. You have those answers and your guides are an extension of you. So learn to work with that. It is worth it and you can do it. You are the one in the driver's seat and it is very, very possible. So let's run over once more. The exercise for feeling your guides. Just feel for your guides in your mind. Don't worry if you're right or wrong. Focus on their energy and open your mind. Feel it open in the third eye in the top of your head. Allow your heart to open and know that you are surrounded by the white light. Feel your white light flow through you and all around you. And ask your guide to bring in clear information or energy through you. And always work in a sense of gratitude. When you wish to talk to a spirit, again, you want to simply white light yourself. Just, it is only a fleeting thought. Then ask by name for the spirit you wish to speak to. Once you feel them, and it's a slight feeling sometimes, simply talk. Talk about what you need to talk about. And when you're done, let them know you're good now and give them a thought of release. They'll choose if they're going to stay or if they're going to go, and you'll be okay with that. When you're talking to a ghost, someone you don't know, simply feel for the unwanted energy or the wayward spirits. 